Hi guys. I, I yeah. hope we're live. I guess I hope I'm we gonna, are too. I'm gonna um because remember we did this last time and we accidentally went live somewhere where we weren't <laughs> supposed to go live, remember? Yeah. Um, um so how you doing, Jay? I'm good. JDK, I'm, I'm I, Star. Hi, we're the Horror Cat Super Show. This is us. This is gonna be our first live. I'm and we are so itching to talk about uh, a couple of things that have gone on in the past couple of weeks, but most of all, talk about um, some of the some of the latest movies we've seen in the past couple of days, couple of weeks. So hopefully you will be on board on this Saturday night to jump in, maybe do some chats, talk with us about maybe your experiences if you are on, but if not, no big deal. We are happy to be here to provide some type of entertainment and hopefully some type of knowledge or insight into where we've been and what our experiences have been. Yeah, and this is going to be on the channel for a while, so if you guys don't see it live with us, um, you can hear us talk about this, like whenever you do, whenever you do find us. So, so yeah. So what's the what's the latest news? What's 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 the big thing right now? Right. All right. So we're spooky season. Yes. Yeah. We'll for all year. Um, so we're let's let's talk a little bit like uh, to set people up about who you know, in case they don't know who we are. We are yeah. the horror cats. We're two cats that love horror. We love all things horror. Um, Jay and I are buddies. We've known each other since the beginning of time. And, uh, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and so we started this channel so we can connect with other people who, who love horror, just like we do. Yeah. And, uh, this is all really new to us. We're, we're figuring it out as we go along. Um, and we've been behind because we've, we did a couple of reviews last, ooh, maybe the month before. And we've watched these movies, but we have missed because we've been busy. We we both have lives, right? So um, we have done a few movie. We have seen a few movies together. So we saw The Exorcist last night together. Exorcist um, Believer. That movie, and yeah. we said that we weren't going to do any um, spoilers because maybe a lot of people hadn't seen it yet, and that's fine. But we'll talk about it as much as we can to kind of let you guys know whether to go see this movie or not um do you want to start with that or you want to just talk about yeah halloween? I, are you are yeah. you excited about halloween like it's i am <laughs> so excited about halloween i think that um one of the funnest things i think that you and i have experienced throughout the past couple of months when we first decided hey we're going to do this mm -hmm. is um going out and really we started god i think it was in in may late May when we did our first uh, sort of convention and uh, Monster Palooza, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, since we've been going to these conventions, Midsummer Scream and uh, Creep IE, I think that we've met a lot of really beautiful people who are in the community and we've gotten to know them to the point now where we're, when we're out, we recognize them and they recognize us. Yeah. And, that's and there's cool. something there's something <laughs> huge about that, right? Mm -hmm. Um, we did a lot of interviews. If you go, if if you're on our site and you're subscribed, you'll see some of the interviews that we've done. And when we run into those people, it's like it's like home. It's like talking to people who are really. Um, I think somebody on put it. Uh, yeah, they're like the 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 person that you just understand because you know we have this this knowledge and this love of this type of uh, genre, this this type of movie. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's just been nice, right? So Star and I have been really busy going out to these um, uh, these conventions, catching up on a lot of movies. Like there are times where, you know, sometimes I'm sitting um, working or I'm sitting out with my dog and and I'm watching horror movies. And, you know, it's fun because sometimes, you know, I'll watch things and then I'll be like, you know, it'll be off season it'll be like in january february march april but as soon as july comes it's like all of a sudden everything opens up and that's the fun part right star that, yeah, well, that that's what we've been experiencing yeah i'm 365 halloween anyway yeah so i don't wait for spooky season but spooky season just gets ramped up but the, pretty much the whole time it's horror all the time like yeah constant <laughs> yeah um so yeah we did we did a couple of conventions and i and we did the last one we did was the creep ie which was 
two weeks ago. There's still footage. We're going to be putting footage all the time because we we have stuff. We find stuff. We're like, oh, we should put that on. And there's, there's going to be stuff. So if you haven't seen, if you talk to us, if you interviewed with us, just keep an eye out for it. it things are coming. It's just, like I said, it's taken us a while um, to do so. And just so you guys know, I'm going to be checking the chat and I'm going to be checking over here. So I'm going to be always, but I'm always paying attention. So um, Perfect. Yeah, yeah I so, think... I think that's the big thing, right? The big thing is it's spooky season. I mean, we're here. It's October the 7th. The 7th, mm -hmm. yeah. The 7th. And it's um, it's just fun to be able to jump in and now everything's getting, you know, you, you walk out in your neighborhood and you see all the, the Halloween decorations out. You go to the stores, you see all the decorations out. So this is the time that, you know, you really live for because it's now it's not just you, right? Now it's everybody. Yeah. Everybody's doing it. And it's like you feel like you really come alive during this during this time frame. And I'm not a freak when I'm wearing my Halloween leggings. Yeah. Out. <laughs> yeah. Now you feel like, oh, look. Now you fit in. <laughs> yeah. Now I can do it. And I don't have to worry about, you know, people looking at you uh, kind of weird. But, oh, you know, yeah. although it seems like a lot of people are starting to do that now. Funny thing is, you know, depending on how you look at it and how you associate things, you know, you, you'll see people wearing... Um, um, even uh, stuff like Terrifier shirts, even like when it's not, you know, horror season or Friday the 13th. I notice that a lot more now, you know, yeah. aside from like the the old metal type of um, T-shirts with the, with the uh, the graphics on it that that look kind of spooky or can be associated with the season. But it's just fun and it's fun and, you know, uh, experiencing it with other people. But it's fun meeting people, too, and that will come up and will actually talk to us yeah. and tell us their stories and tell us what they love and tell us what tell us what has scared them or you know recommend movies to us that's that's the beauty of, of doing this the interviews have been great you know because we get to meet people and the questions we're asking i think people are really connecting with that i love hearing people talk about their horror like they go to the movies and they've been like scared shitless watching something like i love hearing those stories and i love seeing yeah. that and um, like when you ask people about why they love coming to the conventions, it's really universal. Like they feel connected. People feel yeah. connected in horror, right? Like it's community. They, they use that We're word a, a lot. Breed. This is, this is, I feel like I'm in my community. It's, I feel yeah. like I'm at home and people understand me. And yeah, for the most part, I, I, I think that's absolutely right. But when you have a common interest, that makes, that makes it so much nicer. Yeah. So keep talking. I'm going to see if I can get some more people <laughs> sure 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 thing so halloween spooky season is here if you happen to come on the chat or even if you cap capture this um live um when it's all done said and done if you want to leave some comments in just tell us you know what do you like about the spooky season what do you like about um uh, the lead up to the spooky season. Are you a planner or are you one of those people that just kind of says, hey, look, this Halloween, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I am going to do something. Yes. Um, some people are just total pre-planners and they love to think about, you know, the decorations that they're going to get or maybe they're the, you know, there's those really hardcore people that love to make their own decorations and plan what their front yard is going to look like. And, you know, in July, <laughs> I wish they I was start... that crafty. <laughs> right. Um, I'm, I'm the type of person that in around uh, July or August, I start dusting off the Halloween, Halloween decorations so this way I can get ready to put them out, make sure all the batteries are charged, I got enough batteries and all that other stuff. Um, so drop your comments in, let us, let us know what you, what you see, what you like, how you feel about it. And then um, one of the biggest things that I really love, um, and you know what, maybe a lot of, not a lot of people... Um, um, experience this as much anymore with the advent of streaming and streaming services but one of the big things that I love and I used to love is during this time of year you know right when we get you know into September coming into October used to be able to watch broadcast television and broadcast television what would they do they'd start with the horror movies like horror movie nights friday night fright fest friday saturday night horror movies and you can still find that right if you have one of the cable networks 
you can totally go to something like TBS or something like that and you can watch some of the classics, right? You can watch the Halloween series. You can watch um, sometimes the Friday the 13th series, um, Nightmare on Elm Street. All these uh, all these fun things that kind of remind you and put you back into that, you know, where were you when this came out? And I love this movie. Even to the ridiculous point of like watching something like uh, Young Frankenstein. That's one of the movies that no matter when it is on, if I flip stop. through the channels and it's on, I will stop and I will watch it. So there's only a couple movies that I'll do that for, right? It'll be Young Frankenstein. It'll be Halloween. It'll be The Exorcist. And a lot of times it's the Star Wars movies. When I'm <laughs> off season, most of the time I'm watching Star Wars movies. Yeah. So yeah. we could talk about that at another time. But, you know, that's one of the things that I really like about this time frame is just knowing that, you know, when there's broadcast television out there, I know everybody else is seeing it. It's not just me on my streaming service. Oh, I'm going to watch Halloween today. I wish I could know that there's people out there watching it at the same time. When it's broadcast television, you know somebody else is out there is watching it. Yeah. I don't know how you feel about that. I think the, the movie I always stop to watch, if it's on, I'm always going to stop to watch, is The Shining. That's yeah. one of mine. And we, uh, the Harkins, uh, Harkins, Hawkins, Harkins, we just call it the upside down. The theater over here. Um, yeah. They're actually showing they're showing a theatrical release of Shining next week, so we bought tickets for that. Like, hell yeah! They have like a whole week. They're showing all these things. So if you're, if, you know, you like horror movies, check out what the Harkins has. They have some releases for the rest of the month. So we're gonna watch that. Maybe Halloween on Halloween because they're showing it. I'm not. I'm not sure, but that's one movie I always watch. I always watch Carrie because. So I always watch Carrie if it's around. Sorry, this thing's getting all hot. Um, I always watch Carrie and The Abominable Dr. Fives. If that's on, that's the movie. And Black Black Christmas. <laughs> We're going to have this conversation about Black Christmas. Yeah, Black Christmas. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't hate that movie. It's just it's the, uh, it's the MySpace of... Of <gasps> horror movies. I can't movie. fucking believe you said that. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 Regardless, no, no. regardless, everybody has their their favorite. No, no, no. This, this is a fine point. Words, man. Uh, uh, you see, you see, what just happened between me and Star? I have to bring this up because this is something that I had been thinking about for a while. Um, for those of you who are on Facebook, um, I'm. Uh, I joined a bunch of the like horror movie fans and like you know everything horror everything zombie whatever it is so now my feed not only has just a bunch of music on it but it has all this all these um horror pages that every now and then somebody will put hey what's your favorite movie that you want to watch or what which do you prefer this movie or that movie and the feeds that have been coming up lately so I'll give you an example one of the movies that we went to see was um, Talk to Me, right? And Talk to Me has, like, the, the, it, you see, star with the eyes. Like, you see that there are people who absolutely love it, and there's people that just drag it down, right? Yeah. And but, I but think, let me say, I, I, okay, I didn't like it, but if somebody would say, hey, would you recommend that? I would recommend it. I would yeah. recommend it to somebody because I think they would like it. I'm just not a ghosty. You're a ghosty. Yeah. You really like I'm a ghosty, demony person type. You know, yeah, I love those those why, types of movies, that's right? That's why those movies resonate with you. But that yeah. but those movies don't do anything for me. So I'm like, eh, been there, done that, seen that. It was okay. But it didn't, uh, with nothing to write home about. But I would still recommend it for somebody. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I think, hate it, but it's not yeah, something I, think I would the, watch over again. You know, um, I think we, at least people in our generation, star. I think there's a lot of us that will say, "Hey, look, there's there's the the, the the there's the movies that we like, and then there's the movies that we know just inherently um, as ourselves. We know that these are the most scary movies, are the best of movies. Like that's the way we feel, right? But using the example of something like like Talk to Me, there are people who love it, there are people who hate it, and very few people right in between that will say, "Ah, I didn't like it, I didn't love it, it was okay, right?" And I think that's what we run into. That's what we've got to be very careful of, which, by the way, there's a point to me bringing this up. 
is, you know, no matter what happens, I think when you watch a horror movie as a horror fan, I'm pretty good with watching just a horror movie, and if it's not great, and it's not horrible, I will still watch it and just be like, yeah. okay, you know, I'm good. Like, it'll scratch that itch yeah. that, that I, I have, right? And I right? think that's the way horror fans are. We, I don't think there's really ever a horror movie that's, like, really bad. It just depends on what mood you're in. Like, if you're in a sad mood, or you're in a bad mood, or you're in a happy mood, or you're drunk, or whatever, there's a movie, there's a horror movie in any category for you I kind of have changed since we've been watching more movies I've kind of changed my attitude not not to say oh this is like a 10 or this is like a whatever but is this movie enjoyable are you going to enjoy it when you go to the, the theater is it going to be worth you paying the money for or can you just stay home and watch it like I think that's the I'm trying to change the way I look at movies because I don't want to shit on everything There's yeah a lot of movies aren't being very well made lately some are some aren't um but i still love horror and i'm still yeah. gonna watch there's some horrible movies out there i'm still gonna watch it i'm still yeah. gonna watch these movies because i just love it it just depends on what mood i'm in yeah i think that you know? one of the things that i've learned in, in being on a lot of these groups and watching more movies is people start to bash and and the point that really that i'm trying to make is last night and we won't get into this right now last night when we went to go watch um exorcist believer um i was really torn because afterwards you know we you me and and kiki we kind of talked about it afterwards and as as we were walking out and on my drive home and even late last night i'm thinking okay i know we're going to talk about it at some point how do i temper myself to not be one of those people on Facebook who's just going to rip into the movie and tell people this and put my perspective on it, but allow people to go out and experience it. And maybe they're going to walk away with something different, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if, if we'd have had the review last night, I think it would have been a totally different thing, right? But far be it for me, no matter what, you're always going to run into the horror crowd that's going to say... Something like this the thing. Great. The no. thing is is a piece of crap. The thing is great. It's the best movie, whatever. Then you'll talk about, well, people will bring up, well, what about the prequel? The one that came out in 2011. Oh, that's crap, or that was good. It was a good lead-up story. Whatever it is, people are going to feel that way. And you know what? What you got to do is you just got to say, hey, look, people will rag on Blumhouse right now. They will say, hey, look, they're just kind of like the people who are putting out horror movies. And that's what we've got to be happy for. At least there's some somebody out yes. there who are, who are putting them out. Now, not all of them are going to be hits. Not all of them are going to be hits with everybody. But the point is there's True. somebody out there who's dedicated, who is going to put these things out. Whether you love them or hate them, that's something we just got to be thankful for, right? I don't know, man. Like I, Half of me is like go team right but then half of me is like there's so many creative stories that you could be putting out there don't be putting out crap don't kill the franchises that we love there's, there was no reason for this movie okay so do we no do we want to get into that now but let's just get into this okay, okay let's just so, okay so first of all like i said without doing spoilers because we've decided we're not going to do spoilers and we i we don't want to shit on this movie but we have to be honest uh both of us love so we should say this first. Both of us love the original Exorcist. We grew up yes. with this movie. This was a different time. Okay? This movie was 74, 73, 74. 73, I think it 74. was 73. Okay, so 74. this was a different time. Okay? So a lot of these people were seeing this kind of stuff for the very first time. It was frightening. It was like... This is demonic. It was a big deal. Like, people were fainting in the theaters. It was a huge thing. Okay? Uh watching this now it did, first of all it's not going to have the same impact because you've seen so many other movies in between yeah. that it's that's the first thing it's just not going to have the same impact but for us i think the story was really amazing it really was it was still a really good story in general this one i didn't i didn't know what the hell was going on yeah. like i didn't i didn't this really irks me that because it, it, I was almost a, like pissed off. And again, Agreed. I want to be like, 
thank you for making these movies, but if you're going to shit on these movies and you're going to kill the franchises, you can just stay home. Like, don't don't spend the money. Yeah. There was so many people in the theater last night. The theater was sold out. Nobody was making any noise. Nobody was responding. Even at the end, nobody fucking responded. Yeah, and that that's was weird. What I, that's what I was saying. Do you guys understand what just happened? <laughs> like everybody was just eh, and they got up and left. I, that just that said everything that I needed to know. I mean, like I said, I was. We just kept looking. He's like, "What the hell is going on?" Like, yeah, <laughs> what? I mean, there, there was a there was a couple of times during the I think during the third act. I think I kind of leaned over to you and said, "What the hell is this? Like, yeah. what? What's why? what's why what's going we... on? Like, what? Like, I I just didn't get it. But that's okay, right? That yeah. that that's me." I think the premise, they had some really good ideas. Yeah. Um, I like the idea about having, uh, again, and I was telling uh, Kiki earlier, I almost felt like it was blasphemy a little bit to be introducing so many different religions. Right? Yeah. It's just me. Yeah. This, this is just me. So, okay? so are, born, are we just... I was raised Catholic. Are, are we deciding thing. Are we deciding that we're going to go into spoilers then? Because if we're going to go into spoilers, let's go into spoilers. Or... Maybe we can talk about it with with without worrying about what uh, about not trying to give like too to much about what about it without I would like to talk about it and give spoilers, but I know a lot of people haven't seen it yet. So I, I think I just want to say that, like I said, they had some good ideas. There was some good stuff there. I liked where they were going. The actresses were amazing. The little girls were fantastic. Um, cinematography I thought was cool. You weren't all the way sold on it i loved the soundtrack i thought that was the only thing that was really good about the whole thing and even the ending eh, it i was pissed off i i was not happy i feel like they ruined the franchise they they just didn't need this movie period yeah yeah period so i if i was going to give it a score i would probably give it like a three out of yeah. Five. No, I'd probably give it a two out of five, and it would be generous too. That's that's completely generous because you know I would say last night, walking out of that theater, I was so like I'm I'm gonna give this a zero, and I'll take the crap from people online. I don't care, right? Yeah. This morning I, I woke up. I take back my two and I, and I give it a zero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so sucks. so today this morning when I woke up, I said I'm in a very giving mood. I'm gonna give it a point five because I don't even at know. least there was some type of effort there. And I just need to learn to be thankful that at least we got a new movie. Now, is that yeah, what I, I expected? Be, no. Yeah, no. I don't want to be thankful. I don't want to be that, like, because I feel like if we're thankful, oh, we're thankful because you're giving us horror movies. They can give us shit and feed it to us, and we're like, oh, well, I'm just thankful. No, yeah. we're at a level now where horror is, is, is it now. I mean, there's a lot of people who love horror in general. It's not like it used to be before we were, you were the step redheaded stepchild like they used to call it it's not it's it's not like that now we have we have you know better movies like you can make a better movie yeah I, there's no almost no excuse for making something especially with a franchise like that especially with like halloween ends there's no excuse for making garbage when we have so many great writers i don't understand why we're even doing this yeah. Like so, I don't want to be one of those people who settled. Oh, thank you so much for giving me breadcrumbs. No, I don't want that. Give me some good shit. Yeah. I, mean, I don't mind watching like the B movies when I was younger or whatever, but that's a given. Okay, that's what that's there for. I don't want my new movies, especially my franchise movies. I don't want them to be. Oh, I'm just grateful that you're giving me a movie. No, give me good shit or don't give me anything. Yeah. There's plenty of stuff for me to watch on TV. Yeah. I can watch something else. I don't need to, to watch garbage uh, or you ruining my franchise. I don't need yeah. that. Yeah, so so let's let's take it from this perspective. Be thankful that Blumhouse is out there and they're making horror movies, that they're pretty much dedicated to horror movies, right? They 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 hit some 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 good things, some good movies and some good topics every now and then. But this one, I'm gonna be honest with you, if it's point five, my recommendation is save your money, wait for it to come out on streaming. And, and then wait another you know, month. Yeah, wait another <laughs> month. Two months. <laughs> you know, I, 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 my instinct is telling me, and I think we, we talked about this last night. My instinct is telling me that this weekend will be the telltale sign. Mm -hmm. um, the telltale sign of what's going to happen now. Honestly, between us, I think we know what's going to happen next weekend. Yeah. Taylor Swift is going to come out. Her live performance is going to come out, and it's going to wipe everything out, wipe everything, and, and that's going to be... Out. 
yeah. for this movie. I mean, I think this movie's just going to fall, and then it's just yeah. going to be forgotten after that. Now, I- I'm going to be at the Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's normally not my scene, but I'm going to go with with my daughter. Right now. So, so think about that from from one perspective. I'm you be go contributing to that. You go from this this <laughs> iconic first movie that really kind of set a bar. But even at the time, even at the time that that came out, there were a lot of people who kind of pooped on it because they didn't feel like, you know, hey, look, what is this? This is gross. This is well, weird. Th- yeah. This is weird. This is not something that we're used to. But an, then a, a nomination. And then I yeah. that's when people started an awesome, uh, Academy yeah. Award nomination. So people started like, well, wait a minute. You know, so, yeah. But this I don't... movie is an, it's an, it's a, legendary it's not just like this is not just any movie yeah. you know what I mean it's not like it's it's not like a, a basket case or something right basket case yeah it's not it's not like that it's it's a movie this is the movie I mean yeah. there's just like there's the five or six top icons when people say what's like the scariest freaking movie of all time this is in people's like top five yes this is not you know and for a lot of people this movie is number one so I didn't hear too many people say anything when we left, which again is telling. They yeah. didn't say anything. You know, yeah. this movie didn't have uh, a lot of jump scares either, which is okay, cool, because we don't all want to be jump scared the whole movie. But I feel like some of the ones that were jump scared, they were just cheap jump scares. There was a lot yeah. of stuff I felt they did in there just to say for the sake of doing it. We just did it to, to do it didn't really mean anything it didn't really give it wasn't impactful i mean i don't know yeah i think i I, you know to your point i think that um ellen bernstein coming back and again we're not gonna we're not gonna give too much away in this one of the things that just really didn't make sense is if you've watched the original you know what she went through and you know that you know at, at in a couple instances i mean i think anybody who's watching this has probably seen the movie we know that ellen bernstein was abused in that movie. Not only was she beat up, but Reagan did some pretty nasty things to her uh, in, in, inside of that room. And w- Ellen Bernstein's character, Reagan's mom, knew what happened to Burt Dannings inside of that room, how he ended up, how he got killed. And you mean to tell me that that character now is going to do what she did in this movie when she knows that supposedly the same demon is in that room and is untied. You mean to tell me she's going to do that? Makes no sense. So here's my point. Here's my point. My point being is... <laughs> that she would have touched her. Right. Like I'm, like, what? I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> no. Wait, wait a minute. And I think I looked over at you, but I said, it's not even worth bringing up. I'm just going to continue. No, it, but it is. It, right? I mean, it is. And I, and I, it, it, it's such a nuance, but I got it. And I'm like... That's not even what she would have done in the first movie. Why the hell is she doing it there? Right. I take you back to like it. Did, yeah, I. I and at least she had a reason to do it in that movie. She had a reason to do it because that was her daughter. Yes. This is a stranger she's a going stranger. to, uh-huh. but she thinks she yeah. knows that it's Pazuzu. We uh, we can infer that it was Pazuzu. Why would she do what she did? It makes yeah. no sense. But here's the thing. I think it's. Um, I don't want to crap on it, but at the same time, it's like I think the writing. The writing was just not there. It was either... It was hokey. It, it was, was hokey. yeah. It was yeah. disjointed. It was not cohesive. And it just seemed <laughs> like there was either a rush to get it out, number one. Yes, yeah. Or... That was more likely, yeah. At best, it was fan servicey. And most people will use the term member berries, but I don't want to use that. I, I, I want to say it's more fan service. It was. You know, for little callbacks. And I think... The worst that it could be called, which it probably is, but it really isn't, is a cash grab. And if it's a cash grab, I will tell you, Universal Blumhouse paying $400 million for the rights for this movie. And they release it, and it doesn't do well. And then the next week, Taylor Swift's movie thing is going to come out. Holy moly, my instinct tells me I don't see the next couple's coming out. Yeah, I don't yeah, see bad timing, and it's they had to have sequels known that. coming out. Yeah, yeah, they had to have known that. So I don't. Who knows why they? Why? <laughs> who knows why? Yeah, I'm so over that. I'm so over that movie. I'm so over. Uh, you know, I'm gonna forget it. 
Yeah, <laughs> well, here's the thing. You will, but I think this is one of those movies that you're not going to forget because of how horrible it was. Mm-hmm. At least in my opinion. Yeah. Now, if you're watching and you're watching after this live stream, please go into the comments and tell us what you think. Tell us if <laughs> you think that, you think? hey, no, this yeah. was the best movie I've ever That's seen. Ever. Or this was, I love this movie because of the special effects or the makeups or the uh, the makeup or the acting. You know, let's, we'll just leave it as it is there. But my recommendation is wait for it on streaming. Just wait for, for it on for streaming. Save yourself or go see something else. Go I think else. I think there are like Whatever. at least five or six different movies that I can recommend on freaking Tubi this weekend <laughs> and next weekend. I mean, hell, you can you can go in and watch it's um, my basket case. Pick a Shark movie. <laughs> Exorcism or or um, I don't oh know Tarot Exorcism or Ouija Board Exorcism. Any of those. I, I, it's probably going to be a step up, but just set yeah. your expectations the right way. But also, too, <laughs> if you want to go out with your friends and just go see a horror movie and you don't care about it scaring you or making sense or having an ending, you <laughs> just want to go. Or it being good. Thing. You just want to go out and watch, you know, two little girls being possessed by a demon. <laughs> go float your boat and go out and see <laughs> it, man. What did you say? Um... Well, actually, all of our expectations were met on this movie. We can't be disappointed. We already <laughs> thought it was going to suck. <laughs> right. <laughs> we were exactly the I way think, we felt when we walked in. <laughs> I think I told Kiki last night two things, two things that, that, that really got me. Number one was, in a way, this movie really did exceed my expectations because I my expectations was it was going to be crap. So it exceeded my expectations there. <laughs> and then the second thing I think I told him was when we were there, there were some people not too far away from us that were fighting over the seats. And I said, I'm much more interested in seeing what's going on what's over there with these people with fighting over the seat than I am in watching this movie. <laughs> so I was like, that that's the extent of it. But that's my experience. That's the way I saw it. And if you see it differently, please just let us know how you feel about it. Especially, you know, if you're one of those staunch people who say, I really like this movie. I really liked what it's about. Cool for you. I am so happy for you. But at the same time, Tell us why. Ugh. Tell us what you think. Tell us, Tell us you know, where, where it is, right? Um, Tell us wh- where we went wrong. Because yeah. <laughs> you, know, you woke up and you called me this morning. You're like, I'm still trying to think. What, did I miss something? Did you miss something? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, we missed the plot. I don't get what the fuck was going on. <laughs> we missed the plot because it wasn't there. Because <laughs> it wasn't there. <laughs> Pazuzu possessed it. I don't know. Uh, you brought you, you brought up a, a, another good point really early on. Um, and we don't have to get into this super deep. But I think that, you know, when you brought up the point that, you know, they're killing a lot of our franchises. Whether you like it, love it, or are indifferent about it, if you look at it and think about the um, the new Halloween um, trilogy that came out from um, David Gordon Green, I th- who um, directed and helped write this movie, uh, The Exorcist Believer, you'll know that there was a falling off that happened. So let's talk something that uh, that I thought about over the past couple of uh, past couple of hours when I was going over this. Whether you're a sci-fi person or a fantasy person or whatnot, um, you think about what's happened with the Star Wars trilogies. You think about what's happened with Marvel lately. You think about what's happened mm-hmm. with, you know, um, Halloween, or the predecessor to all of these was what happened with Friday the Thirteenth. What happened with the Hellraisers? What happened with the Children of the Corn? Things just started going downhill, but it seemed like it accelerated over the past couple of years. Now, you can blame that on anything that you want. You can blame that on being woke. You can blame that on super horrible, just bad writers out there. All of it. You you can blame it on (laughs) horrible directors with a lack of vision. And there's one movie that I think that that kind of sits in the middle, which I don't know what to blame. If you think of the follow-up to The Shining, Dr. Sleep... That fell off the map. Nobody talks about it. People say, eh, it was okay. Yeah, but there wasn't a lot of people who say, I loved it or I absolutely hated it. It just kind of fell right there, right? Yeah. Um, Was Ewan McGregor great in it? Yeah. Was Rose the Hat? Was she good in that? I love that actress. I love that actress, but it just didn't do it for me, right? 
So, but here's the thing. Things are falling off now. I mean, if yes. you go in, I don't think there's ever going to be another sequel like an Empire Strikes Back or a Godfather 2 that we are going to get within the next couple of years because of the status of our writers and our directors trying to chase the corporate type of, I want to do something safe, I want to do something that's going to make money, and I want to please as many people as I can within that genre and within that audience. So that's something that I'm thinking, I'm ho hopefully there, you know, there's a mild surprise in there someplace, but I think we need to have something new that's coming out uh, no. <coughs> and, I'm, and something I'm brand new. I think everything went to shit when everything went woke. I, I'm going to say it because yeah. I, I just feel like there's a lot of a lot of things that we can't touch now. We can't do. We can, everybody gets offended. And I'm like, can't it's say. just a movie, guys. Like, it's, not, it's not. Some of the movies that we love to watch are super offensive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're yeah. super offensive. And they probably wouldn't fly today. But there was something ab about it. It was just free. It was just, you know, I could see things and I could feel things and I could um, I could go over those things in my head and now I can't even get to see those things because they're offensive and people don't want me to see that there's a lot of shit going on here right and and I just like I just feel that that's affecting and it's not just horror it's all kinds of movies yeah but horror <clears throat> is where we really get down to the nitty gritty horror yeah it's always very reflective of what's going on in society yeah so, I think I can't I think, see what's going on in society because you guys are trying to cover my eyes about it. So it's and you're trying to rewrite of, it too. Like they're trying, trying to, to rewrite. This is total rewrite. 1984, right? Like you're just trying yeah. to uh, trying to rewrite all of the stuff, and it's kind of sad. There, yeah. we're not going to have movies from here out that were like the movies that we used to watch when we were kids. Just yeah, like or at least if we are. It's not going to be a Blumhouse. It's not going to be a major studio that's going to do it. It's going to be the small guy. It's, it's going to be, some be somebody like um, Leone who's doing the uh, the Terrifier series, right? Whether you love him or hate him, it's just going to be something that that something either new or renewed is going to come out. And I think one of the points that um, there were so many times I leaned over to you last night. I said blah 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 blah. I was talking to you throughout the movie. You were probably getting really annoyed. But there was there there was two things, <laughs> yeah, I do it a lot. There was there was yeah. two two things that happened last last night in the movie, and this and then we'll get off the topic because again I don't want to poop on the movie, but at the same time I just I, I think oh, it's worth saying. We're still talking saying. about this fucking movie. Yeah, we're still talking about this forgot. movie because because you know well, as it's somebody relevant. it's relevant to what's going yeah. on in the world. I think. Yeah, as somebody who really loved The Exorcist, and you know, you know that I love The Exorcist. Not only did I read the read the book, but I did a lot of research behind it. Like I really it. love The Exorcist, and you like yeah. this movie more than I do. <laughs> yeah, I love this movie. I even got my picture with me and Linda Blair back there, you know, just yes. sitting on top of my shelf. You know, I met her. She's she's wonderful. But there's two things in the movies movies that that happened last night that I reached over, or at least I looked over at you and said. That's not exactly right, and I'm not, and, and I don't feel yeah, like I I'm, I. There's big spoilers there. You don't have to uh, be into Catholicism for this, but they made reference to the reason why the belief is. You know, are you sure you want to? Are you sure you want to spit that? What you're going to say? I, 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 well, yeah, you know what? I'm Let's just going to, I'm just going to, well, okay, well, there's I, something yeah, that they say want, about, yeah, because I don't want, I know what you're going to say, and I, and I think that's still, that's still spoilery. Yeah, okay, so there's something yeah, that they say about religion and, and about something that happened in the Bible where yeah. they spin it a different way, and I'm like, oh, that's, that's not exactly what it was. There was but a lot then, of shit they were spinning. Yeah, that was just totally <laughs> that was the like other thing that I had a problem wrong, with that and a lot of stuff here's the thing. Yeah, you keep saying it, and people are going to believe it, but th yeah. the moment that they said it, I was like, that's not the reason. That's you not, like, what, that's not what happened. Like, what, are, what are they talking about? So that was the first one. And then the but second one... I think they also one, count on the fact that a lot I, of people I, I, don't know. Don't yeah, know. I, I, think, I think the second one, too, was... When we talk about... we're not going to be in that theater. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think, um, you know, talking about this woke stuff, there's a line that Ellen Burstyn's par uh, character says something to the fact where... Um, hey, I wasn't in the actual exorcism when it happened. They wouldn't allow me in. And she says it's probably yeah. because of the patriarchy. And I thought to myself, like, who are they? Like, did these guys even watch the movie? Like, did, 
did did right? they watch the original movie? Because the she, whole she point. She was in control of that shit. <laughs> yeah, the whole point was, throughout the movie, Ellen Bernstein's character had no faith. She had no faith. Why the hell would she be in there when she would be susceptible to the demon talking to her, to Pazuzu talking to her, blah, blah, blah. We don't have to debate this. But the whole thing is what I, I think that's where I lost it in the movie where I'm like, okay, number one, the woke, okay, I can get that. But to, to look back at the story and say, well, the reason you weren't in there is because you had no faith. In order to do an exorcism, everybody who's inside of that room needs to have faith. And needs to call on God, and she's never done that throughout the movie, right? Anyways, yeah. um, just another, uh, just another thing where you know when when people are taking um, advantage of some of these franchises and th- and going into a writer's room, maybe they're saying, "Hey, a new audience isn't going to dive that deep, so we can say whatever it is that we want." But people who love we're that movie are going to say, man. "You're wrong. Yeah, you're, you're, tr- wrong. You, you're just attention. totally off. You're totally off okay. on that." Um, so I'm going to go to the next thing because I'm really, I'm still irritated about last night. But um, So the next thing I wanted to talk about really quick was um, No One Will Save You. Is that right? No One Will Save You, yes. You no know One Will Save You. Okay, so that's the one that came out on Hulu. I think it came out on the 22nd, 29th. I think so, yeah. And again, spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen this. I know it's been out already for a few weeks. But this one, um, not a theatrical release, which... I think they could have used this theatrical release for this one. I thought it was good. This one, I really, and this is more my genre. I'm the the alien. I like the sci-fi kind of thing. And that's not a spoiler because you see what she's doing in the poster. So you you know that she's being pursued by who she's being pursued. But um, this one was done really well. The one thing I love, same thing with The Quiet Place. There's no dialogue in this movie. There's maybe like two lines or something in this movie and they did this this was all the show not tell this was it man this i loved everything that was going on it was pretty tense and uh i was just sitting there like oh my god oh my god oh my god and then when they showed it like oh my god, oh my god. and i think i think they maybe showed it just a little bit too much but i like that they showed more than one and the variety was enough to to keep me hanging on for the whole time and i know you didn't like the ending so much on this one Correct? I, yeah, I mean, it was okay. I didn't like the ending. I was confused by the ending. But even even the, like the last like maybe three minutes, I was super confused. At you know at at the very end because I'm like, okay, I don't know what just happened. Yeah. But I tied it back you to the only couple, one. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah. that there's a lot of others out there I, I that think a lot said, of people. Yeah. What was that? I heard the um, the director was saying that he wanted to again spoilers guys. Um, wanted to make. I want to say that. <laughs> I'm trying to think of Just say it. Um, well, that that he wanted to give like more of a happy ending. Right? Yeah. I don't like movies like that. normally that's like my thing. Dread is my thing, right? So if a movie doesn't complete itself all nice and neat, I'm okay with it. I- I'm okay with that. I don't I don't need it to be all nice and, and beautiful because that's not how life is, right? Um, this one I felt was yeah. all nice and beautiful. Yeah, no, I, you know, but again, I, I, I agree. Not sure. If what we were seeing was real, I, I think that was kind of explain. Uh, Ex- explain. Was, what do you what do you mean by well, that? Well, I think it was unclear whether she was really on Earth again. To me, I don't know if she ever got yeah. off the spaceship. I don't. I don't know. Like I said again, guys, spoilers. Don't be pissed off at me, please. Watch the movie. <laughs> um, that was the thing about it. So, I I like to think of it that way. I don't like to think of it as like, oh, they gave her. Why her? Right? Why her? Which would make yeah. sense then. If it's not her, then she's not back on Earth. Um, and in that case, that right. would be wonderful. I would, I would, I would say that's a good ending. I like the way it ended. She was fantastic yeah, I, again. Another actress was. She killed this, and I loved. Caitlin Dever as as, as Bryn was probably one Perfect. of the best so good. acting I've seen in a long. And, and here's, let me clarify something. There's great acting, and then there's people with charisma and who really grab that role where when you're watching it, you want to watch what happens to that person because they really sell it. This 
person did it and she has a rival by the way and i don't i don't and and, and we'll talk about who this rival is because this this new young actress actor that is out there completely blew me away and we haven't even talked about this but um bryn uh caitlin dever i think her name is she just totally kept me involved in this movie i didn't like what happened at the end because i was just super confused yeah. But then afterwards, it was one of those things where afterwards I walked away and I said, okay, I think I get it. I, I think I get it. And I think it came down to, an, again, I don't want to call this woke because I don't think it's woke. I think what it is, it's, it's just generational. I think generationally, I think I, I text you this and I said, it's, it feels like a millennial. As long as I am happy, I don't care what's happening out there. I don't care what the real world, I just need to be happy. That's the way I walked away from it. But I was kind of confused. Is she on the ship still? Is she on a different world? Because that last shot of things flying away just made me think, okay, I'm confused. And I'm okay with being confused. It's just because the, the you know, the, the first and the second act were so really strong. And I really like that actress. I mean, she's the one that kind of made me say, okay, I would recommend this to somebody. I lost you, Jay. I can't see you. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Yeah, well, hopefully you'll come back. <laughs> hopefully you'll come back to us. Did you, <laughs> hopefully. Did you go to the upside down? You went yeah, to the no, nether? I'm. <laughs> the I, I'm still here. Yeah, so maybe maybe we're buffering or something like that. But since buffering. since we can't we can't see um, see each other on this, um, the person that I think gives um, Caitlin Dever her um, a really good run for her money. I don't know if you've went to see this. We haven't we haven't talked about it, but um, creator. Uh, the That's new my next movie, creator. Yeah, uh, that Probably movie. Probably next month. There you are. You're back. Probably next month. I got this month is just packed between all these horror movies and the conventions and stuff. So um, definitely, yeah. I definitely want to watch that movie. Yeah, you know how I kind of <clears throat> vacillate between you know it's mostly horror, but I love sci-fi as Mine's well. Sci-fi. Yeah. Um, I will tell you that Did creator. You watch it? So you I watched. watched it. I watched it. Oh. I gotta watch it. Don't tell me. I gotta watch it. Um, and I will tell you that little actress. Amazing. Oh, I, I'm so glad. I don't. I, I'm so glad. I don't know where she came from. I don't know how they got the range of motion from that right. little girl. Yeah. I don't know how she embodied it the way that she did, but she sold that role, and I was like, wow. "Whoa, wait a minute!" Now here's the best part, for me. I am telling people, this is a recommend. Yeah. Is it going to blow your socks off? Probably don't not. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I don't want to know nothing. Okay. But I will tell you, go and see it. <laughs> go and see it. And if you don't know any premise about the movie, go in kind of blind. But yeah. also, keep I know in, a little bit. Yeah. Keep in mind, too, this is an, a, a movie with a budget of $80 million. Something like the rise of Skywalker at like three hundred and eighty million dollars. Incomparable. The level of special effects and creator will blow so that your mind. Better. <laughs> yeah, will blow your mind. Wow. Okay. Okay. Don't yeah. tell me no more. Okay, I, I won't wanna, tell I you really anymore. Go watch it. But I'm so eager for to hear what your what your thoughts are on um, that, the little girl, the I'm actress. Just waiting. I'm just waiting. Yeah. Yeah. All right, listen. I wanted to talk about another movie because um, so we didn't we didn't really talk because we did we tried we did try to do the talk to me um, review, yeah, uh, and that didn't work out either. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, did we kind of cover that already? Maybe we did cover that already. Um, I don't I don't think that we did. I think I kind of drew the conclusion from so, what I see yeah, on. I mean, um, on Facebook that there's people who love it and there's people who hate it. There's people who think it was. It was okay, but but the majority of people fall in to hate it, thought it was stupid, and others thinking, I loved it. And I'm probably more so on the I really liked it, because it's 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 not telling a whole brand new story, it's just doing it in a different way that is super yeah. relevant to, I think, things that we, that we see today in, I, in everyday yeah. life. I felt like I had seen a lot of this in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, a lot of '90s stuff. I felt it felt very much like a '90s movie to me. It didn't feel like something that was fresh or new. Um, 
I, did it? Didn't it? Yeah, I guess it was different because it had a lot to do with. I, I just felt they were there was a lot of analogies to like drug use and like, hey, let's do this for kicks. Hey, let's you know let's record it. Hey, let's you know. I wasn't the demographic, obviously, <laughs> and so maybe that's why. Yeah. And again, it was a ghosty. It just didn't do anything. Yeah, I think I think so. for me it 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 reminded me of things that that I see every day. I love to sit on YouTube and I love to watch the videos. I like to watch people's uh, shorts on YouTube all the time, even the uh, reels on Instagram. And you know when I watched that movie and I saw that hey these are these kids and they have this thing and they really don't understand what they're messing with. Right. It's just like, you know, you talk about somebody messing with the Ouija board. You don't really understand what you're messing with, but their peer group finds it fun peer and they re they record themselves and they just think they, they're getting their kicks off of it. And, you know, yeah. what was what was uh, uh, Ryan Turek's? What was his, his thing? You know, fuck around and find out. And that that's fuck what I really took away from that. this movie is you don't know what you're you don't know what you're messing with. And messing with. It, it 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 did it in a different way. So I'm a proponent of yeah. that. I say I recommend that. It's gonna blow your socks off. No, the acting I think was pretty damn good. I did, wouldn't say they it was. Uh, well, I, yeah, well, they're teenagers, <laughs> I didn't man. Like I mean, like it. they didn't. Let they, let me ask you a question. <laughs> I know in, I suck. <laughs> in any horror movie, any horror movie, if there's a teenager, has there ever been a likable teenager? Um. Yes. I don't Nancy know. Unless they're the protagonist. The, the, yeah. The unless they're the protagonist, were all right? Teenagers and they were they were amazing. I don't know. I these but people, they were again, they were they annoying. Felt very, they felt very forgettable. There wasn't anybody that yeah. stood out special. Even the even the lead didn't stick out as anybody to me who was like, oh, she'd be somebody interesting. Like, oh, I get you know. No, she just didn't. She just seemed emo. She just didn't seem interesting to me, and I just didn't feel any kind of a connection with her. I didn't give I didn't give a shit that she was going through these emotions and what was happening to her. Even when she found that thing and she was touching it and doing all that stuff, and I, I didn't find any of that. I was just like, okay. It just didn't. Yeah, I think that. For me. I I think that you know it all depends on how you see the relevance of the movie and how you if there's any relatability that you have to the character which is really a hard thing to do sometimes in horror movies um because you don't know who's going to who's going to get the axe or who's going to be the one yeah, that it, is going to lose in the relatable. end relatable i just just that it was an interesting enough story that i cared enough that she was experiencing these things i, I just didn't care it just it just didn't there was nothing about her that I really cared to to get involved with. So, yeah, and and maybe that's, that's why those. maybe that's why there's a majority of people, or not a majority, but uh, a handful of people who sit on that side of the fence and say, "I just I just can't I just can't get into this." Right? I couldn't get into um, it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there, there's there's a people who, people who can't get in that. There's lots of people who can't get into sci-fi. There's lots of people who can't get into alien movies because. Either they don't believe in it or they can't lend themselves. And here's a perfect example. We grew up in an era of watching the comedy Airplane. Remember the movie Airplane? Yes. There are people that if you sit down and watch that movie, sure. will watch that movie and they'll look at it and they'll say, did you see what happened? I'm like, why did that happen? Like, why are they doing that? Those are the type of movie, mo people you do not want to watch that movie with. See, you want to watch the movie with people? This, who... this is one of those movies. It's classic. That movie is so classic. You could not show any of that movie right now. No, not at all. The <laughs> Jive Turkey. You couldn't show any of that stuff right now. You couldn't. Sh you couldn't show any of that stuff right now, right? Oh, but yeah. that movie is a classic. And should we not see movies like that because they offend people? Yeah. Yeah. I don't well, want here's a... telling me not to watch. I'm gonna still watch those movies. I don't want anybody to tell me not to watch those movies. Well, I'll tell you in in the very <laughs> short term near. I mean, short term near future, there is going the to be worst. a generation that will come up, and they will find these movies, and they will be talking about them on uh, on the streets. 
and they'll bring them up. Have you seen this? Hey, come over to my house. We'll watch it together, right? Yeah, it'll be Blazing Saddles. It'll be Airplane. It'll be all of, you know, all of these other stuff that we can't watch right now because it's problematic. 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 You're problematic. What's the matter with you, girl? I know. What's wrong with you? You're watching these kinds of movies. Yeah, they said yeah. that word. I get that. Uh, they say it through the whole movie. <laughs> All of them. That's why I love those movies. <laughs> right. right, right. And then I start that to think to myself, well, me, wait a minute. It, 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 am, I, am I becoming one of those am people? Am I the problem? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 you know, am I, turn, am I turning into one of those people that I hear the word patriarchy and I lose my mind? Hey, we can talk about a demon. Anybody can talk about a demon. Be, I don't hey, want to be offended. Okay. I don't want to be offended by stuff like that. I just want to be like, I want to be able to make up my own mind of what I see, and and if I don't like it, I just don't watch it. Like I don't have to get all offended. By yeah. It. Like, yeah. I That's neither I here nor there. It's just a like it, just a quick like quick observation <laughs> as to you know, you know what what you see and what you hear. Um, yeah. But here's the thing, you know, you can you can watch any of the people who review horror movies or talk about, you know, old school horror movies, and they will tell you, they're pretty unabashed and unashamed to tell you exactly what they feel and whether it's a recommend or not. And I think we've talked about a couple here, right? We've talked about um, Exorcist Believer. We've talked about um, No One Will Save You. Um, I did give a recommend to Creator. What was the other one? We talked about another one. Uh, talk to me. I think you were, me. you were on the fence with it as a recommend. Mm, I would still recommend it. I just wouldn't watch it ever again. Yeah. It's just not, not even like a, oh maybe I should watch it again because I maybe I didn't get it. No, I got it. I just, <laughs> I just don't want yeah. to watch it again. You know, it's not one of. Um, yeah, and that's the, I think I think that was the way I felt about um, Cobweb. Uh, Cobweb, it was one of those ones where I watched it and I'm like, eh, okay, I'll never watch it again. It's on TV. And Click. I really liked it. You know why? Yeah. I guess because a lot of, it, in some way, I think it reminded me of like um, the old Vincent Price movies. I, I kind of yeah. felt, I know I kind of felt that vibe where it, it kind of seemed like not too scary. But you were spending the whole time like shrink a marink, shrink a marink, skin a marink. <laughs> you keep getting shrink-a-rink. that one wrong. <laughs> no, I like say shrink a marink. It sounds better. Shrink a marink. Uh, shrink a marink. Um, that one is like God. Oh, you spend the whole time scaring the shit out of yourself. <laughs> and I think those are the best movies. Like you're, you're like. Did you see that? Was there something there? There was nothing there? Oh, my God. You know, and the shadows and the this and the that. It reminded me a lot of the stuff that I used to watch when I was younger. So I liked, I liked that. I like scaring myself, I guess. You know, because whatever you're thinking about in your mind is way scarier than anything that you're looking at, right? Yeah, it's for sure. always those kind of movies. I mean, we have this conversation about, about he who shall not be named. Uh right you know that thing right yeah that movie scares me and it's because they don't show him often and when they do show him he comes out of the water he comes back in he skims the surface and then goes back in and it's just to clue everybody in on what we're what we're talking about we're talking about a really famous steven spielberg movie that came out early uh, early in you know 70 (laughs) 76 that has to do something with the ocean and a beach that star cannot even look at she can't look at it she can't talk about it she can't see a picture of it she can't because it's just triggering it's just triggering for her that is one of the fucking movies it's crazy that like and and i want you guys to please put something down in the comments of something that has truly scared the shit out of you it doesn't have to be like the scariest thing something is it just whatever triggers you triggers you for whatever reason why that movie triggers me i have no real idea it's just the first thing i really remember that i couldn't sleep at night because i kept thinking there's a shark under my bed it was mm. the word. There, it, there's something under my bed i can't even go to the pool right like even the pool is a problem you know if i can't see the bottom forget it i'm not even gonna dip my toe in no not even gonna do it don't like to wait in the water don't like any of that stuff i i just you know i mean look if i was at the beach i would see it coming clearly i would see it coming and i still won't even put my toe in there that's the kind of stuff i'm talking about like 
I don't... I, do I want to be scared like that? Yes, but I don't want to be scared like that. Like, I don't want to go through that. That, But that's what I'm saying. It's those things. Those are the reasons I think I like those kind of movies because it's the stuff that's in my mind which is way scarier than the stuff that I actually see. Those well, clearly this is way inside scared. of your mind because you can't even look at a picture of it. We were out someplace, I think at a convention someplace, and there was a poster of it, and you were just, like, freaking out. You had to, you had to actually walk away from it. Now, I don't have anything like that except I think that probably I think the only one who only one thing that ever really kind of damaged me in a weird psychological I don't know why way was uh, the uh, Oompa Loompas from uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory I think I was damaged by that and I think it was only because they took the kids away <laughs> afterwards um, but I think the only movie that ever gave me like nightmares was uh, The Shining I just thought uh, um uh, Jack Nicholson was out there with an axe waiting for me, you know, chasing me down. And I, I was really young when that came out when I first saw it. But um, I don't think I have one of those movies that really, uh, really do it for me. Well, I mean, that's that's enough. Like, it doesn't have to scare the bejesus out of you. It, it scares the bejesus out of me, but it doesn't have to scare, like, it, you know, on your level of what, like, if, if a five is, is your threshold, then your five is your threshold, right? Yeah. And I think I'm I can tolerate a lot of horror, but there's just something about that movie. I don't know if it's it, I think it's that and also encompassed with the music because I can't even hear the music. If it's in a playlist, I put ignore. <laughs> yeah. Ignore we, that. We were I don't um, want to be in the middle of something and then that comes up and I'm like, "Oh my god, what the and then I just start spazzing out, right? So I just I will I will ignore it in my spot. Where were we? We were at I think it was Midsummer Scream and we were doing an interview with somebody and their movie I think was was it Final Destination? Somebody said, "Hey, I can't even look at that movie. Like I can't even watch it anymore like or I can't even drive behind a truck now uh-huh. that's that's carrying Same um, kind of thing. Yeah. Mine just happens to be 20 feet tall or 20 feet long and it got like a mouthful of teeth. That's that's the difference. But some people it's Pennywise. Yeah. You know, some people like that girl was saying she was saying um, it's it's the fact that it's supposed to be something that's safe. Yeah. And then it's not. The water's supposed to be something beautiful yeah. and nurturing and cleansing. And, and yeah, I don't want to think about going in there to be all cleansed and beautiful and all this and then get eaten. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th- my nightmares are filled with that. As I told you, I have nightmares that I'll be just walking somewhere and all of a sudden everything will turn into water. And I know I'm in trouble. And then I'm all like, <laughs> trying to get, how do I get out of this dream? How do I get out of this dream? Turn into something else. Turn into something. And, and that's what it'll, it'll usually turn into. I've had to deal with that nightmare my whole stinking life. Wow. You know, all because I, I went to that theater. And I have seen shit way scarier than that. Way scarier than that. But I don't swim. I don't yeah. swim. It has, it has impacted me so much that it's going to take a heck of a lot of stuff, like a heck of a lot of stuff, like Keanu Reeves would have to be in the floor, like, come on, start, I would just not, it's not going to happen. Not so you don't know how to swim? Are you doing how to swim? But you just don't do it. I do know how to swim, but I have no desire whatsoever to, you know, I mean, even going to like the aquarium freaks me out, like stuff like that, it's just... But I can sit through the Terrifier. I can sit through Terrifier. I can sit through Texas Chains. I can sit through all of these other pictures of all these other movies. Even though demons aren't really my thing either. Um, I can sit through that. But yeah. anything that has to do, you know, even Universal Studios was a pain in the ass. I'm so glad they took that thing out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, I'm you know so you, glad. Because I'd be you, like, you, okay, it's going to happen. And then for just the whole 15 minutes, I would just sit there like this. Yeah. Just sit there, like, not even looking at anything, and I would just like try to stick my fingers in my ear and close my eyes. Yeah, I think it's so, with something like, especially with, with something like Terrifier. You, we we <laughs> are the generation, me. and most of the people who love love that 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 anthology or that that series uh, are the same type of people that love the uh, the the Jasons and the Michael Myers and the Freddies, all, all of that, because we identified and we come to really like the antagonists in that like we just find find them interesting right um which is okay but it's just the other things just like you know you think about uh, an alien movie it, it, you run between both 
of really identifying and really liking the character of Ripley. Love that, that the Xenomorphs. Just, they are my them. everything. They are they are like I would just own one if I could. Yeah, yeah. That H.R. Giger man, them. he 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 really knew it how was on to another level. yeah to to make something that was that not only helpful. memorable. But even when you look at the drawings and you look at some of the actual costumes, they are, they're, about the, that stuff. they're works of art. Yeah. Like, Imagine yeah. you be dreaming about that stuff. That's, yeah. that's pretty deep right there. Yeah. That, I mean, it, right. it, 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 it's not only deep, man, but if, if you look at uh, his, his book, the, the anthology that he put together, um, there's this really sad um, uh, story about, you know, his girlfriend at the time. And... Um, he did a drawing and you know people are trying to you know she um she ended up passing away and um he did this drawing of her and if you look at some of that art inside of there you can really tell man this was one of those guys that was just so creative and so provoking like he was just a deep thinker and some of that art is just out of, yeah, torment yeah torment and out of this world yeah. but it it made him one of those people that you just wanted to watch what he was putting out, you know, just like any some of these directors, like you think of a John Carpenter or George Romero or Clive Barker, you know, these people just really know how to put together a story, but they know how to put together something that is not only relatable, but they find people within their movies that that are charismatic, that make you want to watch them. And they're not successful every single time, but for the most part, if it's a really good story, um, you follow it, and that's the beauty of it. You tend to trust the people who uh, yeah. who know how to do it. Yeah. So we're going to uh, let's see, uh, 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 what's next? Oh, we're going to Son of Monster Palooza next week. Son of Monster Palooza. So, you know, <laughs> and we went to the one uh, earlier in the year because there's two of them, the Monster Palooza and the Son of Monster Palooza. We went to that one earlier. I love that. And we wanted to, we were going to talk about the difference of creep, uh, creepy, creepy, i.e. versus the, some of the stuff that we had seen. Um, so that one's, that one is in, where were we? Ontario. Ontario, right? yeah. I had never been to that one before. I always do the ones in L.A. I like that it was on a smaller scale because we're always there's always so many people, right? This one was nice. It was on a smaller scale. But one of the things that they did there that I really, really liked and I wish they would do that Monster Palooza listened to this that they should do is they had, uh, I think they were on 16 millimeter. They had a room where they had, they were filming, uh, showing some films and they were all horror films. And I thought, you know what? This is a great idea to get everybody to see that scary movie because I think we saw f I think it was the Adams Family or maybe Family, Family Values I think that's the one they had on yeah. but they had different movies all day long and that would be really great to see that with a group of your peers for people that didn't really get to see those in the theater at all you're yeah. in a room with everybody that's loving the same thing we're all yelling we're all having a good time that would be a hell of a lot of fun if they did that at Monster Palooza yeah, they have and hint, hint, if you're going to do it at Monster Palooza, please make sure you play something like Dawn of the Dead or uh, the original Nightmare or something, you know, something that will bring something people iconic. in. Yeah. Something iconic. Yeah. iconic, yeah. Not that, not that Adam's family wouldn't. Uh, it's just, I think, um, the next day, I think they were going to show, like, Creepshow. We just, it just happened to be that movie that we, that we, we walked in on. But yeah. they had a, the next day they had a creep show, which is that's like my favorite movie. So I w would have wanted to see that. But yeah, something like that, like you know, House of a Thousand Corpses, maybe, or Texas Chainsaw Massacre, something older. You know, even Dracula. So I mean, that's cool too. A lot of a lot of people to be able to. I think the point is to be able to sit in a room with other people. That that's your tribe. Yeah. Right. And everybody's like, ah, oh, I'm digging this. I'm loving this. I'm you know. And especially to see older movies. I don't even know if they could get those on print. But to be able to see older movies like that, movies from the 70s, movies from the 80s, um, that, that would be a hell of a lot of fun to do. I would I definitely agree. love to see that. So that was one thing that I really enjoyed about that. Uh, it, and the other thing was they had like those little duplicates. I, I wish we could put the pictures up on here but the um, the duplicates of like uh the nightmare on elm street house and you can go take selfies on there 
the Halloween house, you know. Yeah. That would be cool too if they had something like that, just a whole room that had different setups and you could take selfies. Um, especially people that had already come cosplay, right? That would yeah. be a lot of fun if they did that too. So I, I like the vibe of there. It was much easier to get in than it was the other places. We yeah. just basically walked in. I mean, you know, the security was kind of right. They weren't really checking anybody, um, really. But uh, I like the vibe. I, I, I thought it was pretty cool. I would go I would go again, I think. I think I would go again. Yeah, I think um, uh, Creep IE out in Ontario was probably a much different vibe. A good vibe, not saying that it wasn't, um, it was something... Very laid back. Uh, yeah, it's super laid back, where something like <clears throat> Midsummer Scream was just pumping. It was energetic. People were so enthused to be there and so happy and so, you know, um, just you know thrilled to be walking around and looking at the vendors but then you know you also had this this area of what was it the hall of shadows that had you know mazes for you to walk through and, and things like that that was that was fun you know that was it's almost like an amusement park type of um vibe that they had there and i don't think everything every, every one of these conventions need to be the same but you know you really pick up on the ones and really get involved and probably spend more time and probably spend more money at the ones that really just draw you in like an amusement park. Yeah. Again, they don't have to all they be the same. They had a lot same. of vendors. Yeah. Yeah, they had a lot of, this one had a lot of vendors, which was cool because, like I said, I'm, I'm all about small business. So I, I like seeing people and what they're selling. Um, that's cool. I think that that's really nice. I would like to see more vendors there too. They didn't have as many uh autograph opportunities but I mean they had Tim Curry there yeah they had Tim Curry there <laughs> right yeah um, we missed him we didn't get to see him because I guess he wasn't out when we were walking around there but they had Linda Blair uh, uh -huh. Tony Todd was there Tony um, Todd yeah and then um, what's the gal from um, um, the witch show oh, oh, God. The from ones. the Tarantino the movie she has the, the rifle on her leg Oh, oh, oh Rose name. McGowan. Rose McGowan Planet, was there. Planetary. Yeah, yeah. Rose See, McGowan I, was I, there. I, I probably should have tried to take a picture with her. I like Rose McGowan. She, she had a pretty long line though. Yeah, I know. I her. know. Um, yeah. her and then you know Linda Blair was there again, so she, yeah, that was a um a cool thing. Um, but I don't really, can't really remember if there was you know who else was there. I know Tim Curry was a big draw. A lot of people were were there to see him, and that was yeah. cool. Um, I don't. I haven't been to, or that I remember, that I've been to a convention um, that he's been to yet. I'm still trying to see Bruce Campbell, man. That's the. We, that's the <laughs> one. I think he canceled at the last two, right? Yeah, or was I, it the, I think he got COVID last time. Something so. like that. Yeah. So hopefully, it's just, yeah, it's we'll keep bummer. our fingers crossed it's that there's a surprise at uh, Son of Monster Palooza coming up. Uh, so. I know. I just keep checking it, like you know. And then I wanna, I wanna take a picture with Elvira, but that whole plexiglass thing just kind of got me. Yeah. And I'm not trying to spend a hundred dollars if I can't get near you. It's that's stuck. right. <laughs> That's I'm right. I'm gonna struggle with Elvira. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not, I'm not ready to do that. But I, I pay some money for Bruce Campbell. Like I would, I would go. Um, I mean, some people like there's some people that I want to see, and then some people that I, mm, I'm not. Uh, I know they're icons, but I'm not like rushing to go. I mean, to get a ticket. I mean, you were different. You when you saw Linda Blair. Yeah. She, like Linda Blair, right? So, oh yeah. So I so I think and you spent Linda a lot of money. Yeah, Linda. I think Linda Blair. You took but, it twice. but you know what the funny thing is? Uh, standing in line, um, we met Zach and the Cookie Girl. I, I can't remember the Cookie Girl's name, but we have her uh, her thing here. I have her little sticker yes. here. Um, what was her we name? met uh, we met them, and we met a couple, a handful of great people that we really got to know and had some laughs with in line standing here and that we was we were in the line a long time that, yeah that was that was <laughs> we a there really half the day with them. that was fun that was fun like the and most, I have that I have that footage I'm going to put that up I still have to put that up yeah I think one of the um one of the best memories is standing in that line because well, you're right it was it was a long time but you know the conversations that we had and the laughs that we had in the line standing mm -hmm. there waiting um that was fun that was that was really yeah. fun. That was one of the most memorable things that I think was, about that was uh, Midsummer Scream. You went out again. I wish that we can still hear you. <laughs> I think it's just the internet. 
We'll figure yeah, this thing so. out. We'll figure yeah. out everything will work out. You'll come back in in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, you've so been coming see, in uh, and out every now and then. Yeah, that's okay. It's okay, guys, as long as you're still here. As long as people are still here. <laughs> and yeah. Whenever you watch this, because, you know, we'll keep, do, we'll keep doing these. Um, so I bought a book, but I think I left it over somewhere. I thought I put it in here, but I guess I didn't. And I wanted to show you guys. It's so cute. Shit, I forgot where I put that book. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about it then because... Um, yeah, we'll talk about it next I time. I won't show it. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that was like really cool. So let's see. Stores I've been going to. Went to Spirit, of course, 500 times. I got my Spirit shirt. Here are my my Sam shirt I bought a bunch of shirts I spent way too much money at Spirit and if you guys have been going and spending a lot of money put some money in the <laughs> put some little money icons in the in the chat because I've spent a lot of money these last two months and I plan on going back um, I bought this really cool uh, Bates Motel sign from Spirit you guys can find it on the website but uh, it keeps dying on me and I don't want to take it back because I'm like what if I never find it again so I'm just gonna keep it broken or not I'm just gonna I love that thing it looks really cool and again I wish I could show the pictures but we haven't figured out how to do that yeah we'll figure it um, out yet but I went to Halloween City this morning which is just like uh, it's just party cities Halloween thing and it's uh, nowhere like spirit because I don't really have anything licensed or anything so you're gonna find a lot more stuff but I mean if you want just basic stuff that's where I, I saw those like super big um, skeletons what I was telling you about uh, but other than that they didn't really have anything except I bought this cute cup it's so cute I bought this and I don't know they didn't really have too much there but uh, I will hit spirit again yeah yeah, I think that yeah, this is the time to go out and get it. And, you know, right before Halloween, go out and get it before it, uh, you know, when it goes on sale. And if you have a, a favorite, you know, uh, decoration that you have or if you found something that is really unique, send it to us. Put it in the, put it in the comments. Yes. Send us an email so that this way we can see what it is. Put and we DMs yeah, on we Instagram would, so we can see it. We would love to share it online when we do another uh, either stream or when we do another video. We can share some of the things that you like or that you have. Yes, that would be fun. Yeah. Have people send in their stuff. That would be groovy. Um, what else? I think that's... That's all we talked about talking about. Yeah. I, I do want to talk about other stuff, but I um, I want to show it. So I don't want to just, I'll try to figure out how to maybe do it through OBS. And we'll figure out how to get stuff on here so people can actually see it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, first live stream, uh, like, like we said at the beginning, we're still kind of figuring things out. We wanted to come to you live and uh, talk at least, you know, give you some insights as to what we thought and how we feel. And uh, no matter what, go out and do what you do. And if you enjoy them, you enjoy them. Yeah, I mean, again, it's the horror community. We're real laid back, but we're real, you know, pissy about our... <laughs> our horror movies and we just want to be fed good stuff like make good movies people and if the studios aren't going to make good movies and you are somebody who makes movies make a movie make you couldn't do any worse than the shit that's getting box office right now guys so focus on that focus on making music focus on making art you know just keep doing it because we need you we need you right we need you I need we need, to. We need some originality out fresh there. Fresh blood. Yeah. Some fresh blood. For sure. <laughs> so what are you going to be watching this um, this Halloween? What is your go-tos? You know what? I have so many go-to movies. Um, I've already, you know, uh, binged on uh, Halloween 1 and 2, the originals. Um, also, you know I love the thing. That's probably one of the ones that I will just put on and let it play in the background. It's one of my guilty yeah. pleasures, especially if I'm working. Like, I'll just put it on. Uh, it's like a comfort, well, you know, as I'm working. And I sometimes have it on silent um, when I'm... I have to watch that. It's been a long time. Yeah. Yeah, but I think those are Mine my go-tos. Um, I think one of my go-tos, let's see, The Howling. Love The Howling. Uh... Go to go to House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah, um, and um, 
I've been watching. A, I've been on an old trip lately, so I've been watching a lot of old horror movies. Mm-hmm. And um, let's see what did I see? I always try to see White Zombie at least a couple times a year because that movie's epic. Uh, Black Cat, love Black Cat, and I'm definitely gearing up for the holidays, so I'm going to be watching Black Christmas. <laughs> Uh, you know what? You know what movie I watched um, during the week? It 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 um, it came up on my Amazon Prime, and you're gonna hear the noise inside of your head when I tell you what it is. Remember that movie Them about the giant ants? The ants. Remember that sound the that they made? <laughs> When I watched it again. Oh, my God. Let's see. I, I watched... What did I watch this week? Because I, I try to write down everything I watch because um, I always want to talk to you about it. So. Oh, I, I rewatched Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the, the old one. The old... Yeah. Like, 1956. Man, that must have scared the shit out of people in 1956. Right. I mean, seriously, that must have really scared the pants off people. Yeah. That movie was so like if you haven't seen that movie, check that movie out. It's it's really creepy. Um, you know, what would you do? And it's kind of like the whole alien thing, right? Like they come down here, why else would they come down here but to duplicate, right? Yeah. Or, or take, take us over or, whatever, or to right? harvest us take over or, or harvest us, yeah. right? And so I think it's still these a lot of these old movies still stand up today because we're still in these same places it's like we haven't time is still we haven't moved even though we've moved all these years ahead nothing's really changed people are still afraid of losing themselves right so, yeah for um, sure that that movie really those are the kind of things that really freak you out like whoa like what happens it's the same thing with the you know no one will save you like why else are you coming down here? There's got to be a reason that you're coming down here, right? So I thought that was a... Um, it's a cookbook. You know. It's a cookbook. It's a cook... Right? <laughs> oh, right. my God. Yeah. Oh, shit, right? Yeah. Okay, guys, if you guys have not seen that Twilight Zone episode to serve man, please watch that. To serve man. Because that's, that's important right now with all these UFO sightings and whoever the hell is has these people. Oh, we were talking about... I watched uh, Slither again. <laughs> Slither. Starla. Yes. Star okay, so 2000. 2000 it's, it's Starla. Yeah. That was hilarious. I'm not really a comedy. I don't really like comedy with my horror. Um, you know, I like everybody, Shaun of the Dead, right? But that's about it. Like, I don't really like that. But that movie, or Warm Bodies or something like that. But this one was really funny. It was really funny. So I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to have a, a day where I'm just going to watch, like, Critters and ghoulies again and tremor and tremors and all that i'm gonna watch all those movies again yeah it's been it's been a minute oh you know we didn't talk about What's we that? didn't talk about saw saw the, the new one saw, saw. 10. Oh, i haven't yes. seen i haven't seen it yet jay sorry That's why we i i think it. i think i i think i my whole intention was oh, that's no. what i was gonna go I see I was going to go and see it because I knew you were going to go see it. I think you had told me earlier, what was it, last yeah, week? Yeah, you should go watch that. Yeah, but I made a U-turn. I I, I was going to go see you it and I said, I want to go see Creator. Yeah. Right? And I was like, I was okay, I'll make up for it. Yeah. I was torn too, but I had already promised the kids. The kids really love, yes, I took my kids to go see this movie. Um, but my youngest is 12. and. He's a fanatic. He just loved, he loves that intellectual kind of detective-y kind of thing that's going on with Saw. And so I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and, and check this out. Um, and without giving any spoilers and without giving you too much, that's definitely one you should go to the movies for. Yep. Definitely. So, yes, go, go watch that and then we'll discuss that one. You know, um, you know what movie yeah, that we didn't talk it. about what? that came out was The Nun 2. And here's the crazy part. I didn't watch that. I, yeah, I know. Did you watch it? I, I, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. So um, it's one of those things. Though, point. Like... I, I think. Um, <laughs> I think something that I wanted to point out that I thought was super relevant. I think it was number one at the box office for like three weeks. But what else was playing? Exactly. Just, yeah, just because it's just because it's one doesn't mean that it's good. It just means that there was nothing else better. Yeah. Um, I have. <laughs> and it's spooky season. It's a given. Yeah. Yeah. I have a. a, a a really good friend, uh, buddy, like a brother to me, uh, Bradford Bell. He does um, um, Brad. sound. 
sound, and uh, he worked on that. He's been working on a lot of movies lately, but he uh, has his name in the credits He did The Exorcist, too, right? Yeah, he did uh, some sound on that as well. So it's like, kudos to Brad, congratulations. We'll be talking to Brad eventually. Yeah, he'll be on. Um, But yeah, I I, I don't, I think The Nun, too, is one of those ones that, just going to wait for it to come out on streaming. Yeah, I'm not interested in that. Um, that franchise, even though it's no. part of what? It's part of the the Conjuring, um, the Conjuring universe, right? Conjuring. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with Annabelle. I'm not interested in that either. I, dolls don't do it for me. Yeah, don't I think Annabelle's kind of like one of those tickets. guilty pleasures. Tickets for what? I have dolls. <laughs> Unless it's Puppet Master, then that's a different story. No. Um, uh, for Horror Nights. Yeah, oh, that's right. That's right. Go. You did text and me. And I tell you, I, again, I tell you, I cannot believe how freaking expensive these tickets are. If you guys got these tickets, let me know. Let me know in the comments because this is just getting out of hand. The t- the regular tickets were seventy seven dollars. The regular tickets for the ninety five million hour line, that was just seventy dollars. And then the two hundred and sixty nine dollars was for the express for the one time we go through. Two hundred. The jump was from seventy-seven dollars to two hundred and sixty-nine dollars. They're That's milking you. They're this milking you. This is ya. getting out of control, but it's horror night, right? Yeah. So I don't even go to not scary far. You said you were gonna go there. I yeah. I don't go there anymore. Yeah. I mean, I I, it's uh, you know the, I'm one of the problems. Spend money. I'm gonna spend money. Yeah, one of the problems that you run into with some of these things is if they don't just sell a limited number of tickets, it's so crowded. Number one, it's it's overly packed in most of these places. But also number two, is by the time you get into one of these mazes, um, you're standing in line forever, and then you're lucky if you get into uh, at least two or three of them in most most mm-hmm. of the time. Especially if you go on a weekend, forget about it. Um, you have to, yeah. you, you know, really find the time that you can go where it's not going to be super crowded. But if I'm not mistaken, I think um, um, horror nights. I think Maybe they limit the. I think they limit the number of tickets, don't they? Yeah, I think that's what they said. I think that's yeah. what they said. Yeah. But I don't know. I'd, we'll see. We'll see how how packed it is when, when we go. But um, midweek is definitely better, like you were saying. Definitely better because we were going to try to go tomorrow, um, and I'm like, oh, it's just going to be too many people. Too many people, and then you still gotta yeah. deal with the COVID, right? So you don't. That's wanna, right. You don't want to tempt fate by being in there with all them. So, I don't know, but I'm super looking forward to that. It's Kiki's first time, so I love taking the newbies. It's gonna be great. He's gonna have a great time. I'm gonna have a great time. Yeah, it's so, gonna be fun. Super um, excited. Yeah, yeah spooky super time excited. is 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 a really good time to go out and spend time with the family and just have a have a lot of laughs, eat some bad food, and uh, experience some thrills <laughs> it's just and hard, some scares. Because everything's like so expensive, and you really gotta be selective on what you're like. I'd love to go to every function, but I can't go to everything, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of hard, like pick and choose, like spend all my money at Spirit, <laughs> go to like, because that's what I'm doing. I I spent all like a tickets for Universal at, you know, at Spirit. And, yeah. But it you know only happens once a year, and it's memories, man. You got to you got to you got to buckle down and you yeah. got to do it because if you don't do it, you're gonna have regrets. And I think that's the that. pandemic too. Also, like, kind of got us there. Like, I just want to enjoy my time out now but I don't want to be ripped off in the process <laughs> yeah right universal right, right. But, so that's 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 fun okay well uh, I'm sure that the next time that we're on we will talk about that and you know take some pictures of this way we can um, yes we and can we'll see figure what out is. how to get all these pictures so we can um, yes and then we'll post on um, on Instagram and the tiki tac and all that stuff the yeah <laughs> yep, and um, um po- <laughs> and post um, um, son of monster palooza, we will be doing some more videos yes. and some more interviews. So be looking forward to that. But otherwise, um, anything Look else that us. we want to talk about? See us. Yeah, yeah come you out and see us. us. At monster palooza, come out and say hi. Um, we want to talk to you. We want to talk to everybody. Take pictures with everybody, um, and and just meet you guys. I love doing that. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, fun yeah. stuff. 
yeah no i think we're i think we're good thanks for coming guys to our first wherever you're seeing this however you're seeing this after before the people that were actually in the in the stream thank you um i had some fun it was good good times man good times yeah fun times hope to see you out there um out there at one of the conventions or uh even just drop us a line drop uh, drop us a like drop us a comment and we'd love to talk with you yeah, tell us what your favorite horror movie is in the comments. Tell us what scares the shit out of you. Tell us what you bought for whatever. Tell us what you're going to eat for Christmas, for Christmas, for Halloween. Tell us what you're going to want. All that stuff in the comments, in the comments, in the comments. We will get it going. And then, again, it's just to build community because we want everybody to get together and have a place that's cool and safe to talk about what freaks we are, <laughs> basically. <laughs> for sure. All right, have a good one, guys. Peace. All right, well, we'll see you soon. This is Star and J Decay. J Decay. We are the Horror Cats Super Show. Thank you very much for stopping by. We appreciate it. We hope to see you next time. Peace and out. Until then, bye. That's not the catchphrase. <laughs> Shiver. Shiver, scream, scream. repeat. Repeat. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.